Oi boys, welcome, welcome to another video on the channel, we are back with some predictions here for the semi-finals of the Rugby League World Cup. So what we'll do is we'll go through the squad, talk about players to watch for both teams and ultimately give a prediction and we're just going to get straight into it. First game sees the Kiwis take on the Kangaroos. As far as lineups are concerned, this is what we got from NRL.com. Of course, take with a grain of salt as this could very well change. In fact, I made a change myself to Australia's lineup and left DCE out and Ruben Cotter in. Speaking of, we'll start with the Kangaroos. So, for the back five, we've got Tedesco, Adokar, Mitchell, Whiten and Val Holmes in the halves, Munster and Cleary, front row, Jake Chaboyevich, Ben Hunt, Tunafa Asul Malayawi, and in the back row, Angus Crichton, Liam Martin with Isaiah Yo at lock. On the bench, uh, they had DCE on NRL.com, Cameron Murray, Paddy Carrigan, and Harry Grant, but like I said, I threw Ruben Cotter in there as he was in the extended lineup. The fact that Mal's even considering tinkering with the Ben Hunt and Harry Grant's combo is pretty crazy to me, and I'm pretty keen to see what they actually come up with. Surely not DCE and Grant on the bench, as they have on our NRL.com. As for the Kiwis, we have starting off the back five, Joey Manu, Jordan Rapana, Petsa Hiku, Chance Nicole Kluxter, and Ronnie Mulitalo. Halves of Dylan Brown, Jerome Hughes, in the forward pack, we've got Jesse Bromwich, Brandon Smith, James Fisher Harris in the front row, back row, Kenny Bromwich, Big Nelson Asafa Solomona, Joseph Tapene at lock. The Kiwis bench consists of Isaiah Papali'i, Kieran Foran, Brighton Nakora, and Isaac Liu. As for players to watch for both teams, we'll start with the Kangaroos. My number one guy to watch here is Nathan Cleary. Actually, first I want to say what I'm looking forward to the most for every game I watch pretty much is the battle between the forward pack. But other than that, I'm keen to see how Nathan Cleary can put a stamp on this game because the battle between the forwards is going to be hectic and I think ultimately it's going to come down to how how both halves control the game. Of the four halves playing Nathan Cleary is the much better general play kicker so yeah can, can Cleary leave his mark on this one and stay claim to the Kangaroos from here on out. Another bloke to watch for the Kangaroos I will just do like two or three per team as Latrell Mitchell. Trail Mitz, or as we call him in our Dolphins career mode, Big Trail. He's probably relieved to see Moses Liotta left out of the Kiwi side, as he'd be having nightmares from the last time these lads met, which was on the NRL Grand Final. Nah, but yeah, Latrell. He's recently come out and said that his ultimate goal during his playing career is to be the greatest indigenous player of all time. And what better way, or better yet, what better stage to add some fuel to that fire than dominating in a Rugby League World Cup elimination semi-final. Couple players to watch for the Kiwis, for me, um, probably for everyone else too, is Joey Manu. There's been some pretty, we'll say credible criticism on Joey Manu and his involvement in the game. Shout out Bloke and YKTR Sports. And pretty much a quick summary of the criticisms because I do uh, tend to agree is that he basically uh, tends to overplay his hand. Like yeah, he does put numbers on the board, but what I've found is that his high involvement does seem to mess with the flow of a team. We've well, seen it with the Sydney Roosters as well. So what I'm hoping to see from Joey this game is a little more calculated when it comes to inserting himself into the game. Part of that responsibility does come down to other members of the spine, in particular their main playmakers being more assertive themselves. And maybe tell Joey to pump the brakes a bit. We saw something like this with uh, the Rabbitohs. I think it was Damian Cook being mic'd up at his interactions with Latrell Mitchell. So yeah, pretty much Joey Manu and Jerome Hughes hoping Jerome Hughes can take control. Another player to watch for me is Joey Tapene. The Kiwis are going to need him to be at his disruptive best, you know. Those tough carries and offload, offload, offload. I mean, yeah, they got a massive, powerful forward pack, but Aussie, they've got some certified tree choppers in their side. Jakey T, he could tackle those middles for 160 minutes straight if he has to. Same goes for Cotter, Murray, and Carrigan. But yeah, the Kiwis need peak Joey Tapene. As for who I'm tipping for this game, it's hard to look past the class of the Kangaroos. Like, don't get me wrong, I can definitely see the Kiwi pack dominating the Roos in spurts. But I think the class and X factor of players like Harry Grant, Cameron Munster, Latrell Mitchell, Isaiah Yo, they've got plenty of players to fall back on. Plenty of supports, and I haven't even mentioned that they have the better tactician, in my opinion at least, Nathan Cleary. So for that reason, I'll take the Kangaroos in this one. Uh, we'll give them the slight win here. Kangaroos by 10 points. And for the second game of the semi-finals, we have the rematch, baby. We've got the hosts, England, taking on Tor Samoa. So for the lineup, there's actually no teams on NRL.com, but I went ahead and uh, chucked on last week's teams for both sides which will most likely be the case unless there's force changes. They would have been for Samoa, but Junior Paulo had his uh, suspension, what's the term here, overturned? 
And he's free to play, baby, so no dramas. As for the lineup, starting with England, we have Sam Tompkins, Tom Mackinson, Callum Watkins, Herbie Farnworth, and Dominic Young to round off the back five in the halves. Jack Walsby, George Williams, absolute weapons. Front row, Tom Burgess, Mike McCurum, Chris Hill, back row, Elliot Whitehead, John Bateman, with Victor Radley at lock. Apologies for the typo, I'll try and have that fixed in post. On the bench, they have Knowles, Lees, Cooper, and McMeekin. For Tor Samoa, starting with their back five, we have Joseph Swa Ali, Taylor May, Steve Crichton, Tim Lafay, and Brian Toto. In the halves, Jerome Luai, Anthony Milford, Junior Paolo, Danny Levy, Royce Hunt in the front row, Lingi Sao, Jaden Sua, and Oregon Galfusi in the back row. And that bench, Josh Mabali'i, Kamatui Langi, Martin Taupa'u, and Chanel Harris Tapita. I guess we'll just jump into players to watch, and we'll start off with the Samoans. For me, it's Junior Paolo and Royce Hunt. All these lads in the Samoan team will be playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, especially that forward pack who got absolutely monstered in the opening game of the tournament. I'm expecting it to be just as physical as it was against the Tongan last week at Junior Paolo along with Royce Hunt setting the tone for the match. Hunt being the aggressive battering ram that he is and Junior Paolo to do the same but more disruptive and like the Kiwis, offload, offload, offload. That's how, uh, that's how the English got on top of them in the first match. More players to watch as the halves pairing. They were the difference against the Tongans. Uh, Anthony Milford seemingly took the reins last week. It was his aggressive defense though that really stood out to me. I'm interested to see if Jerome Muai can get the boys where they need to be and uh, take control of the game. For them to do that though, that forward pack of Samoa, it's imperative for those boys to control the ruck. They may need an extra helping hand in their outside backs. That's where Brian To'o and Taylor May comes in and Joey Swa'ali'i who showed glimpses in that opening match. Ain't no excuses now though, no jet lag, and they've had the reps together for the English. At the moment, they're just a well-oiled machine. Tom Burgess has been an absolute monster for them, as has the rest of their pack, but it's uh, it's Victor Radley. He's the one to watch for this game. He was setting the tone in the first match, doing what he does best and just lining blokes up. Then when it came to offense, he was the focal point of the Poms attack. Such a talent that dude is, bro, for real. Williams and Wellsby, Sam Tompkins, other key players to the English success. It's gonna be such a hectic game, eh? That's who I think would win. You know, when it comes to England and this Rugby League World Cup, I haven't been disrespecting them. I guess maybe underestimating them. Oh, not even that. So I did tip them to beat Samoa in the opening pool game. One thing that they really have going for them heading into this match is that Samoa could be battered and bruised from last week. England, on the other hand, they've, they've been somewhat in cruise control. They'd definitely be the more fresher of the two. And for that reason, I'm taking the Usos, of course. Samoa, to get the upset. That is me picking with my heart, boys. If I were to pick with my head, I'd take the English by two converted tries. But for this video, we'll go with Samoa. And we'll go in another close one. Two points. Alrighty. If you've got any predictions of your own, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed that and would like to see more rugby league related content or more content in general, be sure to sub to the channel and don't forget to run to shoot that like button. Here's a little heads up though, I do predominantly make league gaming content. So yeah, sub with caution. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you. Later.